So WeWork lost $3.2 billion last year. Now it wants to go public with a SPAC advised by Shaquille O'Neal. What world have we got ourselves into? Let's see, read that, guys. WeWork lost $3.2 billion last year, down from $3.5 billion in 2019, Financial Times reported Monday. Now WeWork is seeking $1 billion in new funding as it hopes to go public via merger with a SPAC. It's crazy how many SPACs we see out there, right? All those special purpose acquisition companies. And again, if you don't know what is a SPAC, it's basically a company that is registered solely for the purpose of going out there and buying companies. So it's raising capital from investors and the investors basically invest in an empty company that then is supposed to go out there and invest in a company. And if they're not investing in a company within 18 months, the money is going back to the investors. So let's go through that. So it's hoping for a 9 billion valuation with debt, fraction of the 47 billion it once thought. It's crazy, that company wanted to go public at a $47 billion valuation. Adam Neumann, their their founder and CEO, who used to be their founder and CEO, actually an Israeli as well, used to live in the kibbutz, um, left the company, SoftBank uh, invested in them, and SoftBank are one of the, or if not the largest venture capital firm in the world, invested in them billions of dollars. And things just went crazy. Think about it. I mean, with what went out there right now with the virus, with the coronavirus thing, it's probably one of the sectors that got hit the most, right? Think about it, like what they're selling. They're basically selling office space on a month by month basis. And who's going to the office right now? No one, right? It's crazy. And they're talking about their forecast. They think they're going to go back to normal, but let's see. Anyway, we were close $3.2 billion in 2020 as the pandemic forced its co-working space to shutter down for $3.5 billion the year before the Financial Times reported Monday. How crazy it is, you know, we see all those big companies, all those famous brands. Everyone think, OK, they're amazing. They're making tons of money. But those companies, a lot of time are losing money. They're raising capital from venture capital firms. They're raising a million dollar to then make eight hundred thousand dollars in revenues and obviously that's kind of like how that works right companies are growing fast they try to take to be dominant in the market uh, but it's just fascinating to see how they're creating so much equity value for themselves the owners the founders the employees and at the same time the company is losing money how crazy it is like when you look at small businesses out there like we usually buy companies at two times three times multiples of pre-tax profits and in this case like what the company is even worth based on what based on literally just random assumption that venture capital firms and investors put on it and again that's how some of the biggest businesses out there are being built right they're taking you know uh, the majority of the market and they create tons of value don't get me wrong like that company is super value and i freaking you know admire the work that they built but at the same time it's like they're losing so much money and at the same time, they worth so much as a company. And because of that, they can now go out there and raise so much more capital from other investors. Let's see what they're saying. Those losses came despite WeWork cutting its capital expenditures to just 49 million. Wow, down nearly 98% from 2.2 billion in 2019 as occupancy rates at its properties plummeted from 72 to 47%, 47%. Wow, imagine that, almost half of the um, occupancy rate for this business. At the same time, you also see that the way that they work right now is almost like as a turnaround business because they're cutting a lot of expenses because in the end of the day, what is a business? A business is there to bring in more money, like, like making sure more money coming in, the money going out. And when you see that people are cutting on expenses, it means that they're really, like they try to change a lot of the operations that I guess happened before. In the end of the day, the only way to grow a business is to make more money, bring in more revenues or to cut more expenses, right? To, to spend less. Those are the only two ways to, to grow a business in the end of the day, to, to make more money in a business, right? Make sure more money coming in, the money going out, make more revenues and save more and spend less on expenses. And then obviously bring in more clients, make sure clients stay on a regular basis, especially in this business with WeWork. It's so difficult because people basically pay you rent to WeWork, but they can literally stop that rent on a month by month basis. So WeWork go out there, they buy real estate or they rent real estate long term, but then they rent it back to the business owners or to the freelancer who want to work in WeWork on a month by month basis. So it's really, really interesting and a very difficult business model because you have a lot of expenses and at the same time, your clients are not necessarily 
committed to you long term. There's no really carrying revenue where the clients have to stay with you forever or contracts. Although some of those WeWork clients do have contracts long term, but most of their clients are basically out there on a month by month basis. Right. And that's why it's, I know Sam Zell and some of the biggest real estate investors out there really didn't like WeWork from the get go because of that business model. At the same time, they built such an amazing brand. They grew so fast and that's why they were able to get such an, an amazing valuation. And obviously they had an amazing leader, super charismatic, who just got everything around him. So let's see what they're saying. So, but WeWork is still eyeing a public offering, not through a potential merger with Boex, a special purpose acquisition company, which counts their former, former NBA star Shaquille O'Neal among its advisors, the report says. WeWork declined to comment. How cool it is that Shaquille O'Neal is advising a SPAC company. I'm, I'm just curious. So let's see what Shaquille O'Neal is dealing with this company. So let's go to Bo Capital. Let's search for Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, there you go. Shaquille O'Neal, another advisor, is legendary NBA champion who has achieved the highest level of success in entertainment, investing, and brand building. It's pretty, pretty insane. Shaquille O'Neal investments. Let's see what he got. I mean, he got some interesting companies, as far as I remember. Right? Let's see what he invested in. I think it's super fascinating to see some of the different career and path that some of his famous people out there are taking. So let's read about Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, next financial investment. Sport League, da 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 da, -da. Uh, Kish, Shaq is also dominant in the business world. He has stakes and investment in several companies. The Big Diesel is making another business move, investing in Sports League. There's Brutal, Bloody, okay, I'm just curious about the actual companies that he had. While in the NBA, Shaquille bought in close to 300 million during his career, the money he has invested in numerous companies increased his net worth. Shaq is current net worth of $400 million, making $100 million post NBA through investment and business ventures is quite remarkable. It is. Look at some of those famous, you know, um, superstars out there. Think about like Mike Tyson, the guy made hundreds of millions of dollars and bankrupt. Um, even 50 Cent made more than $100 million from vitam vitamin water and bankrupt, right? So when you see someone like that, like Shaquille, which from the outside, you might think, okay, just another so, you know, athlete, but he's smart. He's investing his money. He's not spending into bullshit. And he's now advisor to some of those larger SPACs out there, probably making a nice chunk of money just from that. So let's let's see how he did it. So how was Chuck is able to make $100 million after his NBA career? He made investment in both Apple and Google, profiting from two companies. Ravelry, Krispy Kreme Donuts is another business he has put money into. Perhaps the company is involved with the most is Papa John. He's part of their board, directors, and their ambassador, helping the company rebound after their CEO racist comment. Interesting. So he's advisor for companies and investing in companies or very famous companies like Apple and Google, right? So he's basically riding the stock. And at the same time, he's part of Krispy Kreme Donuts, which is pretty, pretty interesting investment as well, right? I guess he, got, he likes donuts. The business venture don't stop there for O'Neill. He owns these restaurants called Shaquille's located in California, the big Aristotle also owns 12 chains of the Auntie Annie's pretzel shop and owned 155 Five Guys franchises. Wow, so he owns a lot of franchises. He owns numerous Papa John franchises, not to mention he owns roughly 150 car washes and 40 24 hour fitness centers per essentialist. Wow. The key to Shaquille and financial success post basketball is investing in things that change others' lives. He learned that from billionaire and former CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos. It was those words from Bezos to help Shaquille almost quadruple his net worth, according to him. I heard Jeff Bezos says one time that he makes his investment based on if it's going to change people's lives. And once I started doing that strategy, I think I probably quadrupled what I'm worth. How cool is that? So we learned about WeWork today. They're going through a SPAC. It seems like they say they're going to go back and make a lot of money after the pandemic. But we'll see. Who knows? I think either way, it's a very it's a business that you, you have to respect. Like someone who built a business to that extent. I don't care if you think you like him or hate him or you like the numbers or not. You cannot not respect someone who built such a brand to have so many customers and customers who are basically using him on a regular basis and getting a lot of value from it. And we also went through Shaquille O'Neal. Super interesting to see that he made so much money investing in companies that change his life. And he's buying companies. He's buying franchises, he's buying other companies. He have car wash companies, which basically some of the best businesses out there for cash flow and profits. And it's a cash machine. So super fascinating to see that some of those are 
uh, the businesses that he's part of. Um, anyway, I hope you got some value. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you want to talk about acquisitions, see the links below. Let's book, uh, let's have a call. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.